Good afternoon and welcome back to my home away from home. Um, this course I'm on at the moment, a few days into it now, and I have to say uh, it's pretty heavy going and my head is feeling really muggy. So I thought rather than festering away here in my um, room for the next few hours before dinner, what I'm going to do is I'll just get out and do some exercise. And that means uh, jumping in the car and heading over to the local gym. And here I am. Uh, I'm a little bit early. So while I'm waiting, there's actually, I came here yesterday and uh, as I was leaving the car park, there was a, a guy pulled up in a Model X. And um, obviously I got chatting to him, as you do. Uh, lovely chap. Uh, he had the Model X because he was in the process of having his Model S serviced. I think he'd done 20,000 miles in it and he was over the moon with it. Uh, he said the Model X is very nice. Uh, he prefers his S, uh, but he's also on the waiting list for uh, three, Model 3. Uh, I said, oh, what are you going to do? You're going to get rid of your Model S? And he said, no, uh, I'm going to keep both. You can go off people quite quickly, let's be honest. Uh, but uh, I was asking him about the um, the kind of build quality because I know there's been some issues in the past and uh, it was my understanding it, they kind of got through it and certainly heading towards the Model 3, I would hope that or expect that uh, the build quality would be up there with the kind of the best of the premium cars. But um, he pointed out a few spots on the uh, Model X, which was a brand new one, but already you could see on the uh, one of the rear gull wing doors where it meets the uh, bodywork, it was already starting to kind of wear at the paint. Uh, he said it's only happening on one side, uh, but his experience of Teslas, as he's had, well, he's had one, now had this one, and obviously has been in some other um, loan cars. His experience is they all have little kind of issues. Uh, nothing serious, nothing that obviously has put him off because he thinks they're, they're brilliant. But... Um, it, it is interesting there obviously is still a little bit around the build quality which you would hope for the price you pay for them wouldn't be there but apparently it is uh, but it doesn't seem to bother most owners most owners seem to be quite happy with it and don't seem to be too overly concerned uh, and I think to be honest you probably the money is being invested elsewhere around the technology and you know especially like the battery and the range and the the bits and pieces inside the cabin so uh, not the end of the world, but um, yeah, just another nice EV driver, really. Um, I haven't met a, an unpleasant one yet or one that didn't want to stop and chat. So um, it's, uh, it's just a, it's a really nice community. It doesn't matter what you drive. If you drive an EV, um, everybody wants to talk to you. Uh, and it's, it's great. I really like it. Hey, a Twizzy. Everybody loves a Twizzy. Um, in fact, I don't know if I mentioned it before, Twizy is the first electric car I ever drove uh, and it was in Sardinia of all places and uh, yeah I was on holiday and we were kind of touring around the island and we saw them for rent and uh, we, yeah we had to have a go and it kind of spiralled from there but um, I'm sure I'll talk more about that in the future sometime because today what I want to talk about is um, concept cars and the fact that there's been so many recently it's, um, it's, it's getting boring to be honest but um, there are two that have really caught my eye and um, well, the first one is uh, by Honda. Now, the reason this one and the other one, in fact, has caught my eyes because uh, it's not just a concept car. They've said, sorry, I'm sweating here. Sorry about that. Um, can't be very nice. So I know it's bad enough looking at me normally anyway without sweat dripping off the end of my nose. So um, I'm going to get showered and changed and then um, I'll carry on in a minute. Oh, that's better. Um, I think I'm a little less drippy now. So I'm feeling more human. That's, um, you know, sometimes that's all you need after a, a really hard day and your head's buzzing. You just need to have a good workout and um, you feel brand new again. It's brilliant. So anyway, back to this uh, Honda Urban EV. Now... As I said before, it caught my eye um, because it just looks like a really nice vehicle. They've gone for kind of a retro look about it and it reminds me of a, an old Golf. And uh, I don't think you can go far wrong on that. Everybody likes that shape. It's kind of, it's very short. They're saying it's gonna be slightly shorter than a Jazz. Um, it's quite kind of wide and squat and um, you know, kind of those flared wheel arches, big wheels on it. 
Now, it is still a concept, and although they said they're going to make it in 2019, uh, I think you know some of the features on it probably won't appear on the production model. Uh, so I would imagine the wheels will be a bit smaller. When you look inside, it's got a big screen right across the dashboard. It's kind of a floating dash, uh, a little bit kind of Model 3-like, but a lot longer, and uh, screens on both doors instead of wing mirrors. Now, we've seen that sort of thing on uh, concept cars before. I don't know if it's they can't make them work, whether they don't conform with, with uh, certain standards. We don't know, you know they, they don't appear on production cars. But um, I would imagine there's going to be quite a, a plain looking dash with a screen in it, kind of Tesla-esque, I'm guessing from what I've seen. But um, ultimately, 2019, Honda are going to be entering the EV market with what looks like an absolute winner of a car. If they get the battery right and that, which um, there's a kind of a few rumours, there's nothing really concrete, so it's not worth really speculating. But you know, you've got to imagine it's going to be uh, you know, competing with things of, uh, you know, in the same area. So you know, the new Nissan Leaf, uh, the Renault Zoe, uh, those sort of cars, it's got to compete with them. Good morning, it's the next day and I've got to be honest, when I got home last night, uh, I barely got through the door without collapsing on the bed and falling asleep. So um, I'm going to carry on the video now. Uh, there's only a little bit left to say. Uh, hopefully you can see me okay there. Um, the next car I wanted to talk about, that is concept car, was the um, BMW i5. That's what they're calling it at the moment. Now, the reason this one caught my eye is as with a lot of the sort of concept cars, the reporting of it, they all started with Tesla Vita, or is this the end of Tesla? Uh, no, these concept cars are just a pile of, I don't know, boxes and plastic stra stretched over them on a stand somewhere. They're not Tesla Vitas until they get on the road and they prove themselves. So, you know, why, why this BMW? Well, BMW have definitely made a commitment to electrifying their cars. I think by 2025 they're going to have a number of cars in production. Uh, but this one in particular caught my eye because they've already started um, the kind of production trials and tests and um, you know, as a result it looks like this one actually is going to sort of be produced rather than sit on a, a stand with some flashy lights on it. So I started looking into it a bit more. Obviously it's from their uh, Next Vision concept which I think it was last year there was some adverts on the television we saw on the internet it uh, kind of where they want to go and it, there's definitely some styling cues from that on this um, i5 I don't know that it's necessarily going to be called the i5 when it's released but that's its working name um, so you know we can talk about the battery and things they're talking about over 300 mile range I think you know again until this thing's on the road and we see it for sure we've got to take that with a pinch of salt but um, very quick note 60 times and a really nice looking car with the um, these new kind of stylings they've got the big grille at the front and the um, kind of slashed headlights it looks really really nice and um, you know yes it probably will sit in the same market as uh, a high level uh, Model S but until it's there we can't judge it on it it's not even been made yet so uh, that I guess is my little criticism and it's more around I guess the, the sort of people reporting it they want a headline and that's all they've got to compare a high performance luxury car to is Tesla at the moment. So um, really, really interesting car. I'm really excited to see how they produce it and the other vehicles that they're also talking about. So uh, X3 full electric vehicle is coming uh, and they're, they're kind of, they've, they've gone from um, their normal branding to calling it the I brand. So anything with an I on is basically their electric division. So uh, yeah, competition from a consumer's point of view is a really good thing and um, the likes of BMW they're the kind of manufacturer that can bring that competition so uh, hopefully that will just keep pushing things forward um, the autonomous driving they're really keen on that they want that in place so um, as a consumer really good news and um, that's really it for today uh, as I said it's, it's a bit difficult trying to make um, too many videos at the moment uh, but hopefully that's kind of given you a little bit of extra that um, as it interests me and will interest you as well. Uh, if you've enjoyed the video, remember to like and share it. And if you're not doing so already, subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you soon. Take care.